Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited to be back to finally be doing a Sephora haul. I have made quite a few purchases. I did get a bunch of new stuff and then I also did get a couple restocks because Sephora was doing some sales when Ulta was doing their 21 Days of Beauty. I did share those on my community tab so if you ever wanna know about like new launches or sales that I find personally are really great deals, I will try to share those on my community tab and sometimes on my Instagram so if you wanna check those out I do have to say that I have been in such a funk and I apologize. I don't know what's been going on with me. I am assuming that it's possibly just leftover grief from my bulldog because at first I was really sad and then it went to anxiety and now it's sort of just been this funk where I just don't feel good about myself. I just feel down and I can't place it. I'm not necessarily like it is because of losing Papa but I think it is. So I'm working through that and I have attempted to film like three times, gotten completely ready and just felt so just like blah that I just didn't film. So I am sorry for or the inconsistent uploads. I really do like to upload every, you know, couple days, but I've just been struggling and that's just the truth of it. So I'm really sorry. I hope that I can get back into it. I just have been in such a funk. If anybody else is feeling that, I'm right there with you. So today I'm gonna go over a ton of stuff that I purchased from Sephora. So I will link everything today that I talk about down below in my description box if you wanna check it out. Also wanted to say a huge thank you to every single one of you that clicks on my links and shops through my links. It is a huge thing for YouTubers, myself included, when you guys support me in any way that you can. And it just means a lot. I don't really mention it much, but I see you guys, you know, saying I clicked your link or I use your link and it really does mean a lot to me. So I just wanted to say every time you guys do that and I get a small commission, I thank you so much. It goes back into buying more stuff to review and anything you want me to review, let me know as usual. So I'm gonna stop rambling. We're gonna go ahead and get into this huge haul. If you're new here, I hope you subscribe. And if you love hauls give this video a thumbs up it helps my channel so much and let's go ahead and begin Not quite sure where to start, but I thought I would grab out this palette that I haven't even taken out of the packaging. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Nudegasm Face Palette. I've been seeing people get this in PR and I was watching the swatches on their Instagram and their videos and I got sucked into this. I believe, I believe, don't quote me, this might be my first face palette from Charlotte Tilbury other than the duo, which was like the bronzer and the highlighter. Now the one thing I will say, I haven't even opened this, but from what I've seen online, why is there only one of these? It's the same situation as Hourglass. I do think I saw the Hourglass did release some of their sneak peeks for holiday and it looks like there's a little bit of a deeper option but still it's just not enough and when I was looking at swatches of this and watching some reviews after I'd already purchased it I heard like Julia Adams talk about how it just is not deep enough for so many people to use and I'm disappointed in that. I really think why couldn't we have come out with maybe even three colorways of this. I got sucked in because I really do love that baked texture. It's my favorite for highlighters and I also like it for bronzers, very much like the Nabla bronzers. Now these look very cool and that's the one thing I thought was a little interesting when you look at it. These seem very cool, almost like contour, but then you have this really warm peachy blush highlight hybrid and then the highlighter. So this seems a little out of place to me only because I would have thought maybe there would have been a cool toned blush just because this is more of a contour palette or that these bronzers would have been warmer, but again, I have haven't even touched this yet. So here are the swatches. Of course, I will put close-ups as well. The highlighter looks beautiful. It's that texture I like that's not powdery. The blush is a little bit more subdued. When you look at it in the pan, it almost looks like it's a highlighter, but it is a little bit more subdued, so I do think that it is intended to be a glowy blush. And then you have these two contour shades. Although I feel like, is this marketed as a bronzer? I guess it is a contour because it says super sculpt and soft sculpt. I just really don't understand the one color. Way. That's my huge complaint on this, but I will give it a go, see what I think about the actual formula. But Charlotte, please make more colorways. All of these brands, if you're coming out with a face palette with bronzers and highlighters and blushes, we need options, okay? We need like three options at minimum to make sure that everybody can enjoy these. Packaging is beautiful. The swatches don't look anything crazy, but I am excited to try it. Just disappointed and really hoping that in the holiday season to come that we'll see a deeper colorway for this because otherwise, 
I'm not understanding. Now also in that collection from Charlotte Tilbury, she did come out with new shades of her Super Nudes Luminous Modern Matte Lipsticks. This really is what prompted me to make the order. I was going back and forth on the palette. I kept texting Cheryl because she did get it in PR and I was like, do I need it? And she honestly was like, no. And I was like, something just kept pulling me to want to try it. I think because it's not a powdery texture and I really tend to like that baked formula. But I really wanted to get a lipstick. I knew I did. And even from seeing other people use different shades, I almost want to get more. Charlotte Tilbury has some of my OG favorites. I love Nude Kate. I love Penelope Pink. I think there's another one I can't remember. But I like the formula of these. So I picked up the shade Cover Star. Now watching Cheryl's video the other day, she used more of a like deeper shade. And it looked beautiful. So I may grab a couple more during the sale. Packaging is beautiful on this. And let me go ahead and swatch it. So it has that typical pack which I love. I have not purchased a Charlotte Tilbury lipstick in a long time just because I owned all of the original ones. This is what the shade looks like. I just love this formula. Very, very comfortable. It's not drying, but it doesn't slip and slide. This is really a perfect shade for me, probably very similar to what I'm wearing right now. I just really love the, I guess, the nude shades and the pink shades with a darker liner. I do want to see her expand on her lip liners. Lately, I've been using Icon nude which is one of my OG favorites but I wish there was something a little bit deeper than that that was still cool toned so hopefully she does expand on that but this shade was gorgeous this is something I will get a ton of use out of and honestly I will probably add a couple more to cart during the Sephora sale as I was browsing Sephora every single day, as I always do, I am on it. I'm looking for the new, and a lot of times I'm like going back and forth, like, do I need this? Does my audience wanna see it? And I have a ton in my cart, and I'm waiting to see if it's gonna come to a Sephora near me, or if I have to wait for shipping, it's a whole thing. But I saw this, and I wanted to try it. This is Makeup Forever, the Rouge Artist Shine On Sculpting Lip Color. I do not have a ton of Makeup Forever products in my collection. I feel like they tend to release things more slowly than other brands, but I got the shade 132 Cheerful Beige. What really drew me in was first of all the shine formula because I feel like it's going to be comfortable, but also this packaging I thought was super beautiful, just a little bit different. For some reason, it drew me in. There was another shade I was looking at too. I was kind of in between two, but it basically is just the cap. And then when you take it off, you have the lipstick. Now it is a small lipstick. When I kind of took it out of the thing. It almost feels like a mini, which I don't know, some people might not like. To me, it doesn't really matter only because I have so many lipsticks. But I did put this on top of the lipstick I was wearing just to try it out and warm up my lips. So I am wearing, I think it's called Susanna from Natasha Denona. And then I put this on top. And it didn't look as warm on my lips or it doesn't look as warm on my lips as I had thought but I'm going to swatch it for you. Very creamy and like that shiny finish, but I tend to like that a lot of the time unless I want something super long wear. The only thing I notice is that just the lipstick is really small. So I wonder if anybody else has noticed that, but I do like this shade. It's very much a bab shade. I mean, these are the shades I reach for all the time, partly because they go with any eye look, but also because when I do a deeper lip, it takes a lot of concentration to like line perfectly and get it right, you know, even and everything. And I've mentioned in a previous video, since my lip filler is really wearing off because it's going on two and a half years now since I've got my lips touched, I'm having a hard time like lining just because my lips are changing. So I'm already having a hard time lining my lips. And then when I try to line with like something really deep or vampy, it's just, I can mess it up and then I get frustrated. So most of the time, ease of use and just because I feel like it goes with anything I'm wearing, I do wear nudes. But I do think this is a pretty color. I like the formula on my lips. It feels very, very thin. And I don't notice maybe like a slight fruity scent, but nothing that I can taste or anything like that. So first impression on this is good. It's a basic lipstick, but there is another shade that I am looking at. So maybe during the sale, I'll add it to cart. So very similarly to the Charlotte Tilbury face palette, I skipped this product. I really was like, I don't need it. And then I saw so many reviews that were raving and I was like, I really wanna try it because I'm a huge fan of the Dior Backstage Highlighting Palette. It's one of my OG favorites. 
So I went ahead and grabbed one of their new Forever Couture Luminizers. I really just wanted to try this. I had saw so many people just raving about this on YouTube. So I went ahead and grabbed the shade 01. I thought the shades were a little bit weird. I got Nude Glow. It was either like icy white, pinky, or this really like golden glow. And I didn't know if this was going to be too deep for me. So this is what the packaging looks like. It actually is like squishy like a fabric would be and then the logo right there it's not super weighted or anything and then this is what the highlight looks like now this is borderline a little bit deep for me i have to be careful because it can show when you know when i'm facing forward i could see a little bit of shadow it is intensely blinding. When I used it, I was like, wow, very thin formula, and it's totally different than the Dior Backstage palette that I have, so I'm gonna get a heavy swatch of it here and then swatch it for you guys. So it is definitely darker than my typical go-to highlighter, but again, when I was looking on Sephora, it almost felt like I either had to go with the pink shade or the icy white shade, and this seemed like the most, I guess, neutral, which is more so my preference. I'm gonna go ahead and apply just a little bit. So I just rub my brush in very lightly. I mean, you can see that it is really beautiful, but I just feel like I have to be careful with a little bit of it showing from the front. So maybe it is just a smidge deep for me, although I thought I had seen reviews from people that were lighter than me that didn't notice that from the front. So um, again, I've only used it one time and then just now, so I'll have to keep playing with it, but I really love the formula. I mean, just beautiful. This is my type of formula. The ones that don't have any powder kick up but are blinding, they're not chunky or heavy, they don't grab, they just glide on and give you a really nice glow. I also did grab two palettes recently that I did do videos on, so you can definitely check my videos if you wanna see my first impressions. But I got the Natasha Denona Retro Palette. This is her newest midi palette, which are my favorites from her. They're the mid-sized ones that are not over $100, but they do give you a variety of shades. And this color story is nothing crazy unique, but I think a lot of people love this. Very beautiful, romantic tones, the berries, but what makes this a little special Special for me personally is the fact that it's very cool toned a lot of the times when we see more romantic color stories I feel like it's more of that pinky red tone so I just swatched a few shades that stood out to me in this palette as being a little bit unique being that they are cool toned so they are still in that romantic color story but they're more dusty mauve shades like these two mattes and then taupey almost purple metallics now you can also go in to a couple of the shades in here which are a little bit warmer I mean there's a handful of warm but overall I would say this is more of a mauvey dusty purple romantic color story I love her formula there's really nothing else to say about it other than I think these are some of my favorite palettes in my collection I'm thinking of the bronze palette the glam palette this is gorgeous her midi palettes really stand out to me and I just think they blend beautifully they're easy to use you get beautiful color payoff so these are a yes for me this next palette I grabbed. I also did a video trying new makeup with it. It is stunning. I originally got this off of the Pat McGrath website, but it is now on Sephora. So I did pick up her newest Mothership palette. This is the Utopian Dream palette. I mean, so beautiful. I really just can't get over this shade, which I did use is just absolutely breathtaking. That's really kind of what <laughs> drew me in and made me buy this. So of course these are super expensive, but this one is gorgeous. The look that I came up with, I, I was like one of my favorite looks that I've done in quite a while. So you do have metallics in here. And as I was saying, if you look at these metallics right here, these are romantic. Now this one is a duochrome, but I'm just saying these are the romantic sort of berry tones. There's one cool tone in here, which would be this one, I would say, like that mauve pink matte. But other than that, when you look at these shades, they're the more warm berry, maroon sort of colors copper even whereas that Natasha one is much more cool tone so that's kind of the difference I see there in terms of these two palettes but then these topper shades up here really are what make the pat palette stand out first of all the packaging on this is super heavy expensive we've talked about that I mean it's Pat McGrath but people really go nuts for these special shades so here are the three special shades in this palette 
they are all different, which is something that I like. They're not all just like a champagne or gold, so I like that this color was thrown in there. Now, these are a little bit more gritty and chunky. They do best with a finger or a glitter glue, or she came out with the Artistry Wand, which helped a ton with fallout. The fallout on these can be intense, so I would do your eyes first or use a glitter glue, but the effect these give, it's very similar to like the sophisticated glitter look. They're not chunky glitter at all, but they just are high shine, beautiful on the eyes. So I'm very happy to have this palette. I don't have every pat palette, but something about this one really spoke to me. It's just a big pricey purchase that I don't do all the time, but something about this one really drew me in. Speaking of the artistry wand, I can't find it anywhere. I just dug through everything. I have no idea where I put it, so that's gonna be on my list to hunt down because I actually really liked it. It essentially just grips onto those special shades, makes them more intense and prevents fallout. I actually really enjoyed it. So I'm kind of freaking out like where, where did it go? But we're going to go ahead and move on. I did also pick up a new concealer. This one was requested by a lot of you guys and I did try this in a trying new makeup but I'm still testing it to get my thoughts. I did grab the Anastasia Beverly Hills Magic Touch Concealer. So I am glad to see ABH coming out with different stuff like the brow freeze and stuff like this rather than those huge Norvina palettes that were just like over and over. I was over it. I was sort of over the brand. This seemed promising and my first impression on this was great. It is very creamy and hydrating. If you like like the Kosas concealer, it's similar to that in terms of how hydrating it is. This one might be even more. The one thing I did notice is I thought it was hard to choose a shade. So I went with the shade 9 and this is the shade that I picked, which I feel like will work for me, but it was hard online to figure out kind of which way to go. I kept looking at like five and six and I thought maybe that's too light. So I did end up going with nine. I had to watch a couple reviews to really figure out what would work for me. But I really just found this to be a good medium buildable coverage, but very hydrating. It wasn't thick or heavy, but it just almost looked luminous under my eyes. So obviously I do set with powder, but it just, Felt like it would be a great uh, option for those of you that have really dry skin or dry under eyes. So, so far so good on this. I'll have to keep testing it out, but my first impression was good, so I'm glad I picked it up. I also did grab and demo one of the new Beauty Blender Bounce Blushes. Now these are their cream blushes and I got the shade Cheeky Pink. This was an okay product. It really didn't wow me in terms of formula or color. Packaging is very cheap. I don't typically complain about packaging as much, but it really just feels like it's going to break. I feel like there was no effort put into the packaging. And the formula was just so-so. It applied fine. It's not an overly dewy or matte formula. I do think they say that it is a cream to powder. I really didn't feel that though. It just felt like a very basic, thin formula. It's not overly pigmented, but not too sheer. I just felt like the color didn't wow me. There was nothing that really wowed me about it. A lot of my favorite cream blushes, they're some sort of like dew, or they give me just a really like hot red color or baby doll flush. This did okay, but I think the packaging and just, I don't know, the shade really isn't the best for me. So it's not a product that I think you would hate if you picked it up, but it's not one of my top picks that I would tell you to run out and get. I also picked up another cream liquid blush. This was brand new on the Sephora app, and this is from Milk Makeup. This is called the Bionic Blush. It says blush meets skincare. Okay, I didn't read that, and that kind of scares me a little bit. I got the shade Fly because I do notice, again, that I like those really punchy colors, especially for cream blushes or liquid blushes. Packaging looks like this, nothing crazy, just a little squeeze tube, so let's go ahead and swatch it. So I just put some on the back of my hand, and I don't know if this formula is going to be for me or a lot of people. This is very emollient, very wet, very sheer. Uh, it almost feels like a really sheer lip oil, the way it feels. When it first came out, it felt sort of like a lip gloss, but when you rub it in, it's extremely sheer and very wet. This is not going to go over powder. I, I can almost guarantee that, which I'm a little disappointed because I do have, you know, like the Glossier um, cloud paints. Those will do over powder if I use a light hand. 
This one just feels like oily and really emollient. I should have read the skincare thing. Honestly, I just saw liquid blush and I saw the red color and really went for it. I'm going to try to build this up a little bit, but I feel like this may be one that you just want to wear if you have like no makeup on or if you have dry skin and you don't set. This feels like a lip gloss. Okay, so it's building up a little bit. So it's definitely building up, but again, I just don't see this going over powder. I will give it a try, but because I do always set my face before I use cream blush, I'm a little disappointed. I'll have to try this out, but I do feel like some people might like this that like that super intense glowy look and they don't use powders. For me, it's just a little different than what I was anticipating. So next I picked up a couple hair products. I got the small size of the Living Proof Perfect Hair Day 5-in-1 Styling Treatment. So I have such an issue with my hair holding a curl or style. It is just so incredibly fine that I could literally curl my hair, pin it, use hairspray, let it cool, and it drops and then it's gone. I just don't know what I can do to give my hair more texture. I've tried using like less conditioner, but then I feel like my hair is really tangly and I feel like I'm ripping it out and damaging it so it's kind of like how do I get some texture in my hair without damaging my hair so I tried this a couple times and I really like it this is interesting because they do market it as a five-in-one it is for smoothness volume conditioning strength and polishing so this really did give me some texture to my hair I think it also does have a heat protectant in it which I thought was really nice so I just applied a I would say nickel size amount to my damp hair and then dried my hair definitely gave it a little bit of a grit and I noticed that my curls did hold a little bit better so I'll keep trying this out I'm glad I got the small size but the reviews on this were incredible and I believe I was watching like TikToks about curling your hair and somebody recommended this so I grabbed it to try and my first impression was good but I'll have to keep trying it out and see if it really does make a difference giving me a little bit more volume and texture also watching TikToks, I saw somebody use this before they curled hair, and they said that it really helped to hold the curl. So this is from Color Wow, and this is the Style on Steroids texture and finishing spray. So I tried this today, it's a little intense. So I actually like to use this more so before I curl my hair. So if I'm going to curl my hair, I like to section it and then spray this and then curl my hair. It just gives me some sort of grit again to hold the curl. Use it on your dry hair for volume, turn your head upside down and spray under the layers. And then it says for waves, uh, section by section before heat styling. So that's the way that I used it and that's also how I saw the person on TikTok use it was before you go go in and do waves or curls. So that's how I like to use it. I've been enjoying it so far, but I'll keep you guys updated on this. So in this haul, I did grab one skincare product. I typically do not buy a ton of skincare. For me, less is more. I am not one of those people that can layer on a ton of stuff because I will break out and irritate my skin. But I had heard a lot about this and I love the Freck uh, Rich Bitch Moisturizer. So I grabbed this Cactus Water. This is essentially a daily toner. It is a cleansing lac lactic, I can't say this, cleansing lactic acid toner. It says it looks like water, acts like water, but it's so much more. So it promotes evenness in your skin. And basically after cleansing, you just put this on and it's supposed to help with like texture, pores, things like that. Now I have had a hard time figuring out what will work for me in terms of like a lactic acid, AHA, so sort of like everyday toner, because I feel like a lot of them are sticky. I have tried the Paula's Choice one and it broke me out actually. I know a lot of people really like that, but it actually broke me out. I've had some decent luck with this pharmacy deep sweep. As you can see, I've used maybe almost half of it. So this would be my favorite if I had to choose, but I had heard so many people raving about this cactus water. And I have to say when I used it a couple times, it really does feel like water. You almost feel like is this anything, but it's very gentle and that's what I like. So I'll have to use it more long term. Let me know if you use this one or this one and I want to know your thoughts on it because obviously skincare is something that you have to use long term. So if this doesn't break me out, I'm really hoping that it'll help with my texture. I do use a retinoid at night, but I don't use like daily something like this. I know you're not supposed to use them together, so you have to use like this in the morning and then you have to use the retinoid at night. But I'm always looking for one that's not going to irritate my skin or leave a film or something sticky because I do wear makeup most days. So these don't do that at all and they don't break me out thus far, but I just don't know if I notice like more even or smoothness on my skin yet. So if you've tried these, I wanna know your thoughts down below. 
Now I also did pick up a repurchase, but I got a different shade. This is one of my favorite powders. My top two powders ever are the Haley's Beauty Retouch Powder and the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Loose Powder. So I am almost out of Pound Cake, which is more of a white brightening shade, and I probably will buy a refill during the sale. But sometimes I notice that I like to put it under my eyes in my T-zone, but to set the rest of my face, sometimes I feel like it's a little bit light and it lightens my foundation. So I grabbed the next shade up, which is Banana Bread. This is just one of my favorite powders of all time. It's just very, very smoothing and lightweight and locks your makeup in. I got a couple more lip products. I couldn't help myself. So I have three lip products to share with you and then a couple repurchases and we will finally be done. The first one is this NARS Air Matte Lip Color. I am a huge fan of these Clay de Peau liquid lipsticks. They are called the Radiant Liquid Rouge Matte. These have a very mousse-like texture. I love like a velvet feel and that's what these have. I'll swatch one of them for you. It swatches honestly kind of like shit and you're like, what? That's trash but these are so comfortable and they last longer than the typical liquid lipstick or I'm sorry and longer than the typical lipstick but they're not as drying as the typical liquid lipstick I hope I said that right I feel like I just said lipstick 80 times these are something I would grab for if I was going to be out for the day and I just didn't want to have to worry about reapplying but I also just didn't want that dry cracked feel super comfortable I honestly am almost out of these I think I have three shades that I use these are incredibly pricey but I would repurchase because I use this shade like all the time just in my daily life so I did want to try this NARS one because it is is supposed to be very similar almost like that powdery feel and I picked up this shade shag are we shocked no because I wear pinks like most days <laughs> when I don't have a lot of makeup on I like to go for pink so it has that soft matte sort of packaging to it and I'm pretty interested to see how this will swatch I mean honestly it's swatching very similar this is a little bit thicker and this color is a little bit deeper than I had anticipated so I hope it works for me because again most days I'm wearing like something like this around the house but it's very similar maybe a little bit more moussey and liquidy but essentially these are not transfer proof but they hang on longer than a liquid lip no I keep saying that wrong they hang on longer than a lipstick than a bullet lipstick so this would be something that I would put on and it would wear for like four or five hours and then maybe just reapply they're just super easy and convenient and comfortable whereas the liquid lipsticks to be honest they just get that ring they crack and they just look kind of shitty after a while and I just don't want to deal with that dry cracked feel so I like these I just don't know if I like that shade that's not matching up so that's a little interesting to me but I'll have to try it out it might be like a nice sort of flushed berry tone you know I wear the same colors all the time but I can't help it it's just what I like now if you've been watching some of my recent videos I've mentioned once or twice how much I really like the new vice lipsticks from Urban Decay specifically the cream formula so they did send me some and I found some favorites but I wanted to get this really light shade called oat milk and this is in the cream formula I love the formula on these just very hydrating nice pigment they don't get goopy or you know thick on the lips. This is a very light shade, but it would be something that I would put on in the center of like a deeper lip liner. I just really love the formula. These bullets are not like breaking, so they're not super fragile, but they do have a nice cream finish to them. Very, you know, comfortable on the lips, but also they're not slipping and sliding because I don't like that either. It's like a fine line. I need it to feel nice on the lips, but not transfer all over the place. And I really like the ones they sent me, so I wanted to grab this shade. The only thing I don't like is the packaging you have to have it lined up and as someone that's like doing my stuff and I'm trying to close things I struggle and I did tell you that in the other video like even now I'm like where's the where's the class so you have to have it lined up so just keep that in mind I mean it definitely makes the packaging look really pretty but ease of use sometimes I find myself struggling the last lip product I got I was told by my friend Cheryl how much she loved it so I went ahead and grabbed the Fenty Beauty heat lip gloss and this is in hot cherry now since then she has released three more shades and I'm eyeing one of them I just have to make an order but I really wanted to try this because I do like that really juicy look these are supposed to plump your lips which I really don't need so I don't really typically go for like plumping stuff just because I don't I don't need my lips plumped but I'll go ahead and apply some of it first let's swatch it so it actually has some pigment to it but it's not like over the top scary just gives you 
a really pretty, you know what, this reminds me of the way it looks of the Jaclyn Cosmetics lip oils. It just gives you that really, you know, the DSLs if you saw that video. So, but this is like the plumping DSLs and it's thicker, it's not a lip oil. So let's just apply some of this. It smells delicious, but I can smell a little bit of like a cinnamon in there, which I'm assuming is what plumps your lips up. But you can see from me applying it, it's not crazy red. Just gives you that really kind of juicy look. So let's see, you know, what kind of plumping it does. Again, I don't need plumping, but overall I like this. If you don't like any sort of like tingle, I would probably stay away just because I can feel it. It's not as bad as like the Too Faced uh, lip injections, but it is more than like the Buxom. So just keep that in mind. But I am going to grab another shade. I want to get maybe, I'm, I'm in between the pinky and the nude. I mean, what can I say? That's what I'm always drawn to. So I do want to grab another shade. I'm just sort of deciding, do I want to wait for the sale or just grab it now? And then lastly, to finish off this haul, I did do a couple repurchases because Sephora was offering a sale to kind of match the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty. And they had a couple things that are staples in my routine. So I did grab two of the Benefit Precisely My Brow. I use the shade 3.5. I am on Benefit's PR, but they always send me the shade 3 and it's too light for me. So I just went ahead and grabbed these. I believe they were on sale for like 12 bucks. And this is something that I go through all the time. I mean, I always have these in my collection. Lately, I have been really loving the Huda Beauty brow pencil too. But this is something that I always use to fill in or to kind of do my tail. I kind of use like a ton of different brow products to do my brows because they're a pain in the ass. But this was on sale, so I grabbed two of those. I shared it with you guys on my community tab as well. And then another staple product that I love that I actually got on sale last year and has lasted me this whole time was on sale again. These are the Milk Makeup Vegan Milk Cleansers. This is my current go-to cleanser. I do also use the Curology. So I use the Curology before bed and because it comes with like an unscented cleanser. And then I use this in the shower. So I have gone through multiples of these. It is not overly scented. It does not strip my skin. It does not break me out. And that's the biggest issue that I have. So for me, this is a staple product. And I think they had it on sale. Don't quote me but I think like 13 or 14 dollars so I went ahead and grabbed two because this will last me probably all the way until the next time that this goes on sale not sure why this goes on sale even the vegan milk moisturizer I'm wearing it today I love it and I didn't even see it on Sephora so I'm wondering if they're just continuing it but I really liked their vegan milk you know cleanser and moisturizer to see it on sale I took advantage of it and grabbed two all right, guys, so that's everything for this Sephora haul. I'm sorry for my absence, but I'm hopefully back to it, and I'll be back to uploading every three or four days for you guys. So let me know what you want me to use first in trying new makeup, or if you've tried any of these products. I want to know your opinion, if you loved them, if you hated them. I will link all of the products down below if you want to check them out and shop yourself. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I hope you'll subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video.